Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime. Gateway still makes laptops, which was actually surprising to me. I thought they went out of business a while ago, at least the laptop and desktop market. But recently, I was browsing Walmart's website and noticed a bunch of different gateway devices from Android tablets to laptops like we have here. And I figured I'd go ahead and pick one up because they actually just started selling these in Walmart stores around the U.S. Now, this one here actually has an 11th Gen i5 Tiger Lake CPU. It's the 1135G7. And on paper, it actually looks like a really nice little laptop. They do offer a few different color variants from pink black, silver, and blue like we have here. I just chose this one because that's the one they had on the shelf. Along with the laptop itself, you're also going to receive a 65 watt wall charger. When it comes to I.O., over here on the left hand side, we have one USB 3.0 port, full size HDMI, and USB Type-C. Moving over to the right hand side, we have a micro SD card reader. 3.5 millimeter audio jack and another single USB 3.0 port. So this specific laptop came in at $499 and for the CPU we have that new 11th gen i5 1135G7. 4 cores, 8 threads, base clock 2.4 GHz with the turbo up to 4.2. Built in Intel Iris Xe graphics up to 1.3 GHz. 16 GB of LPDDR4 running at 3200 MHz. Non-user upgradable, it's LPDDR4 so it's soldered to the board. A 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, but it's really cool because on the bottom of this, there's a little compartment we can remove with two screws and add another M.2 drive up to two terabytes. This is running Windows 10 Home right out of the box, and we have a 14.1 inch IPS display at 1920 by 1080, which actually looks way better than I thought it would. So when it comes to this new Tiger Lake CPU, it's actually a great performer when the TDP is set correctly. On this one, right out of the box, it's set at 15 watts. It's perfect for web browsing, 4K video playback, and things like that, but if you want to do some gaming, you will have to up this. And luckily for us, the BIOS on this thing is basically completely unlocked. And with a few quick setting changes, you can actually double the performance of this thing. So while it's booting up, press delete, it's going to bring you into the BIOS. We're going to head over to advanced, and as you can see, there are a ton of settings to mess around with. But the only thing that I changed was inside of power and performance, GT, which is going to be our GPU, and from here, I want to make sure that this is at its max frequency, and we want to enable turbo. And by setting this to disabled, it will enable the GPU to turbo up to 1300 megahertz. Now we're going to go to the CPU performance section and find TDP. And from here, I just went through and turned this up from 15 to 30 watts. And that's all I changed inside of the BIOS, and I was able to almost double the performance of this laptop. And just to give you an idea, Here's a benchmark I ran, 3D Mark Night Raid, on the stock TDP, which was just right out of the box at 15 watts. Total score here, 6,566. After changing the GPU turbo settings and the TDP in the BIOS, I ran the benchmark again, and we got a 12,047. This is a huge performance jump, but keep in mind, we are pulling more power from that battery, so you won't get great battery life running this at 30 watts. But if you're looking to get more performance out of this specific laptop, this is definitely the way to go. All right, so here we are. I'm up and running. Uh, everything's been super smooth so far. I haven't run into any issues. Uh, one thing to note is I did install the latest beta driver for the built-in XE graphics. I'm really not sure how much of a difference it makes, but uh, it does work with this unit. As you can see, we have that 1135G7, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz and the built-in XE graphics. First thing I always like to take a look at is just to make sure that these graphics will be running at their maximum speed. Start a render test and it jumps right up to 1300 megahertz. So as long as you enable that in the BIOS, it will go to 13. If not, it's only gonna go to 12. And I know that's only a hundred megahertz jump, but every little bit helps with these integrated graphics. When it comes to using this thing as an everyday laptop, you're not going to have any issues with web browsing. Uh, we do have AC Wi-Fi built in. Unfortunately, it's not Wi-Fi 6. Check out some 4K video playback from YouTube. And from here, just go full screen, show you that we are at 4K. Stats for nerds. And these little chips do an amazing job at 4K video playback, be it streaming or native. And we don't have any drop frames up here. Usually on the initial load in, it drops about five frames on these chips. But here, we're getting pretty good performance. So if you want to stream 4K from YouTube or your favorite streaming app, you're not going to have any issues.
Now it's time to take a look at some benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5 Single Core 1355 Multi 4451. This Multi is looking a bit low even for this chip here, but keep in mind this is only a 4 core 8 thread chip. When it comes to benchmarking the built in XE graphics, we already saw this Night Raid with a 12,047. I also ran Firestrike coming in with a 2,924. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,263. And the final benchmark I ran here was PC Mark 10 with a total score of 4,549. So overall, when it comes to the benchmarks, they're not looking bad at all for this 1135G7. But uh, what about gaming on this thing? That's one thing that I was really interested in. These XE graphics actually perform really well for integrated graphics, so let's jump right into it. First on the list, we have Fortnite 1080p performance mode. Up in the top left-hand corner, you will see Afterburner running. Remember, we did up the wattage on that CPU to 30 watts, and by the end of this run here in my afterburner logs, we had an average of 87 FPS. 1080p, but we're in performance mode, keep that in mind. Next on the list, Forza Horizon 4, 900p, low settings, we got an average of 63 FPS. And to tell you the truth, dropping these games down to 900p is probably the way to go, and on this built-in 14-inch display, they still look really good. Overwatch came in with an average of 79 FPS, 1080p, medium settings. Here's Skyrim Special Edition 1080p medium settings. Unfortunately, at medium 1080p, we just can't get a constant 60 out of it. But if you want to keep those medium settings, you could drop this down to 900 or just go to the lowest settings with it. It's really up to you. GTA 5 on these mobile Tiger Lake chips really doesn't work out too well at higher resolutions and even at 900p on the 1135G7, it does struggle to hit 60. With this one here, we actually got an average of 53 FPS, normal settings 900p. And finally here we have Street Fighter V 900p medium settings, you can run it at 60 all day. So through all of my tests, I did monitor the CPU temps given that I took it up to 30 watts and at idle we were at 37 degrees Celsius, average gaming on this 73, and in a 10 minute Cinebench R23 test it did hit 89 degrees Celsius which did cause it to thermal throttle. But under everyday normal use, video playback, web browsing, you want to do some photo editing, video editing, and even gaming, at 30 watts this little cooler can handle it. So real quick, I did want to pull the bottom off, but uh, just take a look here. You can add an M.2 SSD. It's non-NVMe, but you can add up to a two terabyte drive here without removing the complete bottom. And if you're interested in seeing an external GPU running over M.2 with this little accessible slot here, just let me know in the comments below. I think that would be a cool little project. But other than that M.2 slot, I mean, you could replace the internal one. This is kind of a no name 512 gigabyte unit. The RAM is already soldered to the board. We have 16 gigabytes. So there's really not much more that we can add to this than storage. I mean, we can't replace that RAM or anything like that, but uh, it is easily accessible if you need to get in here to replace the battery or anything. So going into this, I really wasn't expecting much out of this little laptop. I just saw it at my local store. I figured I'd go ahead and pick it up to do a review because I know a lot of people will be going into their local Walmarts and seeing the new Gateway laptops on the shelf. This is actually a decent performer when you get into the BIOS and up that TDP. 
With the gaming performance that you saw in this video, you're not going to get anywhere near that at 15 watts. But once you get into the BIOS and up that TDP, this thing actually puts out some decent power. And the screen on this actually looks really good. It's not a borderless screen, it's only 1080p. 14.1 inches, but they did use a decent panel in this because when I've reviewed cheaper laptops in the past, the panel always falls really short. But this IPS 1080p display looks really good for what we have here. I would have loved to see a backlit keyboard on this thing, but unfortunately it's not backlit. The USB Type-C port on this will do video out and you can charge the unit over USB Type-C, which is a big plus. And overall, like I mentioned, I'm kind of impressed with this Gateway laptop. I mean, if you're looking for a cheaper laptop that puts out some decent performance after a little bit of tweaking and you don't need a big bulky gaming laptop, this is definitely something to think about. I'll leave a link to Walmart's page where you can pick one of these up and I'll also leave the official Gateway link. I did end up finding their website and they do have some more information on this thing. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing me add a GPU to this thing over M.2, let me know in the comments below. But other than that, if you have any questions, you know where to leave them. And like always, thanks for watching.